Hey friends, it's freaking Nick here, and today I have prepared a special video for you all. It's about this upcoming asymmetrical action game from Hellbent Games called VHS. I am a huge fan of the asymmetrical horror genre, and I've repeatedly said I want more games to coexist in the space so that the genre can thrive and we as the consumers can have more options. The game is going into beta testing sometime in the near future, and I have spent hours researching it and have compiled almost everything there is to know about it. This information comes from Hellbent Games' official social media accounts, their Discord channel, and from a stream they did with TechSmith314. I'll cite where footage comes from and urge you to follow all these wonderful people. Also, the timestamps are provided for each of the categories we will be talking about. First thing is, what exactly is VHS? It is a 4 vs 1 asymmetrical game that takes a ton of inspiration from campy 80s monster movies. On the one side you have 4 teens, and on the other you have 1 monster, or otherwise called the evil. This game has been in development since early 2017, and the devs waited 4 and a half years to reveal it because they wanted to be sure that their game was in a good spot before they showed it off. CEO of Hellbent, Christopher Mayer, has said that their biggest inspiration for VHS are Evolve and Left 4 Dead 2. They wanted to recreate the feeling of needing to cooperate with teammates to take down an overpowered enemy. That's why in VHS there is no escape mechanic. The entire objective is for the teens to eliminate the monster or vice versa. They also have said that they have inundated themselves with the asymmetrical genre of video games and have logged in hundreds of hours in these games as a team so they can see what they think would work and wouldn't work for VHS. As the title of the game would suggest, VHS revolves around this theme of vintage 80s movies. The lore of the game is that five teenage friends go to their local movie store and somehow get sucked into the world of these movies and one of them gets transformed into a monster. Rather than lean into the darker side of the genre, Hellbent is embracing the kind of campy side of this. Instead of trying too hard to scare the players and possibly falling flat, the goal is to make sure that the gameplay is fun and the core mechanic, the chase, is something that brings a lot of tension to the game and gets your blood pumping. That's why after experimenting with multiple options, they settled on a warmer and more inviting art style and are avoiding blood and gore with this game. With that being said, let's talk about the teen and monster gameplay. The teen's objective is to defeat the monster. The way this is done is by wounding it with four different stigma or weapon affinities. There are eight different crafting stations scattered around the map, two for each stigma. At these crafting stations, you can make weapons to afflict that type of damage on the monster. For burn damage, you can craft and use flamethrowers, molotovs, and a sunstone, which is a turret. Shock damage comes in the form of a ray gun, a remote-controlled helicopter drone, and a shock sphere, which propels the user towards the monster. Purify damage comes from a cross that shoots a beam, a slingshot that launches holy hand grenades, and a staff that can only be charged by healing teammates. And cursed damage comes from a sword that shoots dark beams like the master sword, a summoned eyeball that is user controlled, and an enigma, a talisman that can only be charged by being within 12 meters of the monster. Easier to use weapons take longer to craft, while harder to use weapons deal more damage. The crafting weapons mechanic forces a cat and mouse dynamic, where the teens need to run like hell when they're unarmed, and then try to cost cautiously sneak up on the monster when they have their weapon in hand. There are other little things around the map that aid the teens in their objective. There are medicine cabinets lying around that allow the players to heal themselves, and there are lockers to hide in. Furthermore, there is an item called the noise maker that can be placed on the map. When the monster walks over it, it creates a noise, and all the teens get wall hacks for a few seconds. The loadout follows a point-based system where you can have up to 5 perks depending on how strong they are and how many points they cost. Stronger perks cost more points to use. Different teens have different potentials, and those affinities make certain perks cost less to use. Of the teens we know of as of the time of writing the script, Faith's potential is healing, Brett's is a champion which lets him power through injuries a little bit better, Gloria's is a healer, and Jess is an assassin, meaning she has stealthy perks. After getting struck twice by the monster, you are downed and have to crawl around. Your teammates can pick you up off the ground, but if your health depletes to zero, you are out of the game. While downed or dead, you pass on to the beyond and can project what is called a spectral. A spectral is a little ghost baby that can spectate the map, ping locations, and still communicate with teammates via voice chat, but it is unable to see or hear the monster. There are also orbs of life essence around the map that can be picked up as a spectral, and these will increase your health the next time you're revived. Also, every map has one special book of the dead on it, in a random location. This book can be used to revive one dead teen. They will come back as a zombie with a decayed look and a new shuffling animation cycle, so that's neat. Finally, let's talk about communication. Hellbent have said that they're balancing the game around the highest level of gameplay, meaning they are going to assume that teens are all communicating with each other. To bridge the gap between solo queues and squads, the game has an in-game voice chat. For those without microphones or who don't like in-game voice chat for whatever reason, there is a pinging system where you can tag objectives, locations, and the monster. Furthermore, next to everybody's character portrait, you can see their location on the map.
Now let's talk about the monsters, also known as the evils. If you queue up as a monster, in the pregame lobby you will be with all of the other teens and you will appear as a teen. However, when the game starts, you get cut off of the voice chat. You spawn in the map as a teen and get to choose when you transform into the monster. This can lead to some mind games with the teens, but it's probably best to transform early while the teens are vulnerable. The game will launch with three different monsters with quite a few more in development. The devs have said that for VHS they want to focus exclusively on monsters and not have humanoid killers. Each monster has three unique abilities with cooldowns and the perk system works identical to the teens. The werewolf's abilities are hunt, which allows them to track teen locations, berserk speed to close distances quickly, and howl to make the teens cower in fear, unable to use items for a short period of time. Its home map is the high school. The weaponized amphibious replicant technology, otherwise known as the wart, is a conglomerate creature not unlike the Pokemon type Null. Its abilities are leap, where you travel a short distance quickly and incapacitate teens in your landing zone, echo, where you send out a sonar wave that bounces back to you with the location of where all the teens were at the time that you used Echo, and Acid Armor, which protects you from one hit for a short period of time. Its home map is the facility. Third, we have the Doll Master, a grotesque looking doll that vomits out other dolls that act as both sentries and can be used for attacks. Think of it as Dead by Daylight's The Twins, except the Doll Master has three little Chucky-like dolls that they can use. However, doing this leaves the Doll Master open to attacks and the dolls can be destroyed if found. His home map is the hotel. All the monster needs to do is incapacitate all four teens. Tracking is done by patrolling the crafting stations and and using abilities to determine their locations. The dev team have put extensive resources into the sound design of the game, which makes determining enemy locations by sound a critical skill to develop. To avoid the possibility of a monster being absolutely demolished by a team using all four stigma at once, the moment a monster is damaged by a stigma for the first time, they become intangible and are quickly able to transport to another part of the map is a sort of respawn mechanic. However, if I'm playing monster and have already been damaged by a burn weapon, the next time I'm hit with a burn weapon, it will just stun me and leave me vulnerable to another attack. It's a trade-off for the teens if they want to spend time crafting a weapon they don't necessarily need in order to stun the evil to hit them with a harder to land weapon. In addition to perks and abilities, monsters have a rage mechanic. The rage meter builds up over time and when maxed out, they become enraged. When enraged, the next time a monster damages a survivor, they will instantly be knocked down, even if they're at full health. The way to counter this is to injure the monster before they get a chance to injure a teen. Once a monster is injured or they have downed somebody, the rage meter resets. Occasionally, a dark shard will spawn on the map. Each player can see it and whichever side claims it gets to see the location of all enemies for 60 seconds. Now let's talk about the maps. The game will launch with three different maps, the high school, the facility, and the hotel. Each new monster introduced to VHS will come with their own map. However, this doesn't mean that the killer is tied to the map. For instance, you can still play as Werewolf on the hotel and Dollmaster on the facility, etc. Map layouts are set, meaning the cafeteria, courtyard, locker room, etc. will always be in the same location. What changes are the location of different objects like vaultable windows, crafting tables, healing items, so forth. With VHS being a free-to-play game, Hellbent plans on making their money primarily through cosmetics. There will be cosmetics obtainable naturally through progression and through grinding out in-game currency. However, there will be some cosmetics only purchasable with money. Characters can be customized extensively, with customization slots for shirt, shoes, jacket, gloves, bracelets, hair, glasses, jewelry, and more. Monsters will also come with costumes that they can wear. VHS devs say that even though you can make monsters look pretty goofy, it still doesn't take away from the tension of the chase. It has also been said that money will not give anybody a competitive advantage that they couldn't get through grinding. New monsters and teens can be purchased with money, but can also be purchased with currency through playing the game. There has not been any word on if they plan on going for any licensed characters, which could change this, but a workaround could always be made to make a licensed skin that turns Dollmaster into Chucky or whatever. The progression system in VHS comes primarily through accepting challenges and completing them. Lore-wise, VHS calls it renting a movie. If you rent a movie, you accept the challenges that come with it. After finishing it, you can return the movie to gain the rewards. You can also rent extended and director's cuts of these movies, which give harder challenges. They've said it can take as short as one round to complete a challenge, and as long as 20 or more hours if they're more difficult. 
If you've made it this far in the video, you're probably interested in VHS and you're probably wondering when it will come out. VHS does not have a firm release date yet, but they have said you can expect to see it being streamed by certain content creators pretty soon as a first wave of beta testing. Then they'll continue to open up the beta for more and more people who have signed up. By the way, you can sign up for the beta at vhsgame.com and you can get more information through their social media. VHS will initially release on PC through their in-game launcher, Steam, and the Epic Games Store. Since multi-platform games have to deal with a lot of bureaucracy to push out patches and updates, the plan is to keep it on PC only until they feel comfortable with the state of the game and its success and stability. They will then decide on which consoles to release the game on and when. To wrap this all up, I want to talk about Hellbank Games and how passionate they seem to be about this game. Christopher Mayer himself has said that he has logged in over 3,000 hours in VHS, and you can tell the development team truly cares about this game. You could even say they're hellbent on making this game as good as they possibly can. They've personally reached out to multiple content creators to ask for their opinions and feedback, and have been receptive to criticism and suggestions. To close this out, I'm going to read an excerpt from their mission statement. Asymmetrical games are something we've spent a lot of time studying because we're huge fans of the genre. We believe we're bringing something special to the table with VHS. We are also coming into this with a plan for future content and updates extending well beyond just our beta release. Key to that is communicating our goals to our community. We're a relatively small team and we're probably going to make some mistakes, but if we do, we don't want it to be because we shut out people who want to make our game better along the way. Once again, I want to say thank you so much to Techsmith314 for giving me his blessing to use his footage. Please follow him. Please check out Hellbent Games' social media platforms if you want to find more information about this game. And hopefully I will see you in the beta test.